So Chicago Acapella opens our 20th season this Yay. fall uh, with a concert called Genius in the Synagogue, a musical portrait of Max Janowski. And Janowski, of course, is the famous Chicago-based composer, mostly known for Jewish music. And uh, you actually worked with Max for many years. I did. I mean, he was, of, of course, not only the dominant musical personality at the synagogue, but he was the dominant musical personality in Jewish circles in Chicago for, you know, for decades. I remember, you know, as a little kid in St. Louis, sitting in Temple at the High Holy Days and waiting. Of course, I didn't know that it was Max Janowski, but waiting for the Avinu Malkinu, which is probably his most famous song. Yeah. Because it was just such a, you know, incredibly powerful piece of music. And uh, I, I've, since I've gotten to know a little bit more of it, a lot of his music has that characteristic. It's very emotional. It is. Um, kind of almost visceral in a way. It is. And the more I think about it, the more it seems like it's, it's sacred music, but it's like Jewish opera because it's so, it, it grabs you and pulls you in the way Lucia or Don Giovanni or, you know, the Valkyrie will, 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 will draw you in. There's nothing, there's nothing detached about Max's music. There's nothing reserved about it. And he had this incredible uh, personal story, too, which oh, yeah. I'm just starting to learn a little bit about. But apparently he escaped from, or at least got out of, Nazi Germany. Through music. Through music, music was his ticket out. In right. 1933, he won a piano professorship in Japan. And then in 1937, Max came to America, and in, he went to New York, and in 1938, he won the composing competition, the prize for which was the music director job at KAM Temple on the south side of Chicago. Wow. That's what brought him here. And of course, that's on October 13th, where our opening night performance takes place. Yep. But yeah, that's the place where, when I was a kid, he really had, had completely made his stamp there. There was a beautiful organ loft. I remember I went to Yom Kippur services was probably 12. I was so proud of myself because I was fasting that day. You know, I decided I was going to do the whole day, really do it. And having Max and the choir and the soloist up in the organ loft and Moish Levy down on the down on the bima chanting and the rabbis reading, I just I just thought I had been lifted up to heaven. It was it was so sublime. Well, I also want to go back to the just sort of the sheer oral power and beauty yeah. of the music yeah, itself good. because people that have never heard a note of this before might not be uh, might not know what to expect actually and um, I just feel like it's just the quality of the music itself um, is so powerful that I think people will really get an emotional uh, connection to it right away. Yeah, even if you've never heard a word of Hebrew or don't know anything about that language, I mean, I, I, I know people who have been moved to tears by this music with absolutely no prior exposure to Jewish music. It's that good and it's that powerful. Max's medium was Jewish sacred texts for the most part. So you'll also hear African American spirituals and some church music that he wrote and Yiddish pieces and things like that. But at its core, it is sacred text from the Torah or the Psalms or somewhere else in the liturgy and he put his gifts to create a whole new body of repertoire that um, that no one else had done before. It is, it is a unique musical voice, it's ours, it's a Chicago voice in a sense and it's just unbelievably powerful. Well, can't wait to hear it, the celebration of the 100th birthday of Max Janowski. Happy birthday, Max. <laughs>